So we had talked before about Apple expanding the Ultra name from the watch to other Apple products. And we both have had the Apple Watch Ultra for almost a week now. We can give our thoughts on that. Um, but at first, everyone mocked the idea that they thought it was crazy, that, oh, Apple's going to do an Ultra iPhone that's ridiculous. Everyone thought it was ha ha funny. Until now, the rumor suggests that uh, actually it looks like that is going to be the case. We now have new rumors that there is going to be an iPhone 15 Ultra with a couple of exclusive features. And to give you some real big, um, well, what should I say? Well, I guess they are big rumors. What we sort of know right now, sort of the big uh, story of this, is that it seems like Apple's going to rename the Pro Max. That because of the success of the Pro Max in previous years, and especially this year, it seems to see, I think I saw a stat today that 60% of, I don't know if it was all iPhone 14 sold, or at least between the Pro models, I think the split was 60-40 Pro Max, that there is such a love for that larger size. Apple's going to rename the Pro Max the iPhone 15 Ultra and give a couple of exclusive features just to that phone. Before I tell you what those features are, Matt, how are you feeling about the name change? And do you think that uh, the Ultra name is appropriate for the iPhone? And will that continue on to other Apple products in the Apple ecosystem family? I, I, I think it makes a lot of sense because... I mean, you can kind of see Apple did this with the Pro name back in the day. They had the, iPhone, the iPad Pro, MacBook Pro, obviously, and that kind of made its way throughout every product line that Apple makes. And it seems like they're kind of doing that with the Ultra name. And I guess for me, the real question is, what does that actually mean? Because right now, the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max are the same phone besides battery and screen size. So if they're going to go for this Ultra name, I mean, we'll talk about what, what we're expecting for that. But... For me, if they're going to do that, that really means that they got to add new features to it, just like what they did with the Apple Watch Ultra. So what are we expecting from this quote unquote ultra iPhone? If anything, like, do we know? We could speculate, obviously, but what I, are the rumors? We've got a couple of ideas and the ideas sort of make sense or they sort of line up to what you'd expect and what we've seen from the Apple Watch Ultra. So the big story with the Apple Watch Ultra, besides it's, it being rugged, is it's got a bigger battery. It's got a bigger display. It's got a brighter display, and it's really the um, the halo of the category, and that's what's expected on the iPhone 15 Ultra. Apple's sort of cheating a little bit because the Pro Max already had the largest screen, so you can just check that box. It yeah. will have the Ultra, will have the biggest screen, uh, a bigger battery. Apple can also sort of get away with that as well because it's going to have um, the most space for a bigger battery. Now, I should say... The 14 plus, well, actually, no, that has a better, the best battery life. I think the biggest battery is still in the 14 Pro Max, uh, so that I would think make. The I think the plus has a bigger check. battery. I think the plus has a bigger battery, but they're very similar. By the way, they could bump it up a little just to make the Max or the the new Ultra. They can make it better. Exactly. So you're talking a bigger screen. You're talking better battery life, a nice bright screen, and also some exclusive features. So here's what we've heard so far: an iPhone 15 Ultra would have be maybe the only phone with USB-C that is a possibility that if you want that USB-C port really badly, you'd have to go with the Ultra. We heard a rumor this week that Apple could put two selfie cameras on the Ultra. Mm -hmm. We're not exactly sure why or what that would do, but if you want the most cameras, you would obviously have to go Ultra. And then something we have seen Apple do on their bigger phones is give those phones exclusive camera features. In the olden days, I want to say olden days, a couple of years ago, the Plus <laughs> phones, those had the second camera. So if you wanted two cameras, you have to go uh, with the larger phone. And then back with the 12... Um, the had the larger sensor 11. reserved just for the 12 Pro Max. I don't, was oh, it yeah. 11 Pro Max? No, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. It was, yes, and it then the 12. 13, it was the same, and then you know, obviously this year got a little different. So I could not only expect to see a larger sensor, but I think the big thing, if we're talking camera, the Ultra might be the only phone with the periscope optical zoom. The rumor right. right now is 10x optical zoom on the iPhone 15 Ultra. So putting those all together, bigger screen, bigger battery, USB-C, upgraded selfie camera experience, and then an optical zoom. Those are five things right there that would just be on the iPhone 15 Ultra. Matt, is that enough? Uh, for me, yes, because the camera, Periscope camera, which was rumored early on to be in the iPhone 14, obviously that didn't happen, but that was a rumor and I would be totally down for that because I'm 
wanting better zoom with higher quality. So I'm down for that. Uh, the front facing camera, I guess let's talk about it real quick. What would those two cameras be for? Because I don't <laughs> know. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I guess I, I, the rumor came out and all I've seen is Apple could do this. We don't know why. So I don't yeah. know what those two like cameras I get The only thing I would think that would be useful for me that I would actually like to have is if they did like an ultra wide selfie cam because my arms are too short to be able to hold the phone out and get like a decent selfie. So I never take selfie photos. Half of the time I actually use the ultra wide camera on the back and hold it backwards and take it um, just because I want it wider. Uh, so maybe they would do that, but that's kind of a weird reason to do two cameras. I have also heard maybe some something to the effect of like AR integration, but that's stupid. Um, plus it has the, the what's it called? The uh, true depth camera system already. So you don't need two cameras to do the depth sensing. It already has sensors there for that. So that doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I guess another thing co that could be is that maybe there is two camera sensors there, but they are not actually camera sensors. Like one of them is a regular selfie camera. The other one is a camera technically, but that's not what it's actually for. Maybe. I don't know what it would be for instead, but I don't know. That's the only thing I could think. Um, but I'm trying to think of other things, you know, interestingly, if we go back to, I guess, 2021, right after the iPhone 13 was released, we got rumors from John Prosser about this rumored iPhone 14, which obviously never came to be. And that was quickly squashed. But the more you look at that phone, it seems like that may very well be what the Ultra is. And mm. there was also other rumors of a possible titanium band on the outside, which if you look at the Apple Watch Ultra, that is made out of titanium. And it would be lightweight and really rugged that they could put onto the iPhone, give it more strength and make it lighter, especially if this is a big phone. Um I, I think this makes sense. A lot of the pieces are kind of falling together. This this would also be a new design theoretically because this would be three years of the same design. So they introduce it with something new. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I would really like in this, but I, I think those features are actually quite a bit. I do think if if this is real, it will come with titanium. I think that's, if it's going to be called Ultra, it's going to come with titanium. Uh, and I do think the screen is going to be great and the battery life is going to be big and they will have a different camera in some way, shape or form compared to the regular pro. Um, yeah, I, I think it makes sense. What do you think? Do you think this makes sense? I think so. We have Mark Gurman who just in his weekly, um, Sunday newsletter said that the iPhone 15, at least some models should get a refresh design. So make of that what you will. And also, you know, to John Prosser's credit, he did say that it was probably, it seems like some of his leaks were maybe a year early. And if you go back and look at what he showed off for the Series 7, is very reminiscent in a lot of ways to what we got with the Apple Watch Ultra. Maybe that was the state of the Ultra back in, you know, the yeah. fall of 2021. So if we're working with that timetable, I could totally see a sense where that design is for the iPhone 15. I don't know if Apple would go as far as to give an exclusive um, design just to the Ultra, but I could definitely see where the Pros have that new design, and then the regular 15s have maybe a, a scaled back version or a regular design. To get the dynamic um, island or something to change it up. That definitely, that was another thing that should be the case. We had heard that Apple was going to do the double hole punch on all phones this year in 2020, well, I guess should, next year in 2023, and now since that rumor has come out, we know that Apple is using the dynamic island with those double hole punches. So so I'm assuming that in 2023, all phones look at the Dynamic Island, which if you look at the way Apple's marketing the Dynamic Island, it's like they never embrace the notch, but man, they are embracing this yeah. like crazy. <laughs> I definitely see a world where next year all the phones have it and it's going to make a lot of people want to upgrade, even if they don't have the pros, because I feel like, you know, there's a whole other rabbit hole to go down of people who are so unimpressed with the 14, they just don't care or they're so unimpressed, they're gonna pay the money to upgrade to the 14 Pro because at least that phone looks different and works different. And I think that that's gonna be a big thing next year for the entire iPhone 15 line. You don't have to spend a thousand dollars to get a phone that looks and works differently. Yeah, no, I think that that makes a lot of sense and it really will differentiate the line. I think right now they're in a good place. I mean, we'll have to see how the Plus does, the 14 Plus, because that is a new phone this year. But uh, I think it, it does make sense. You get the small and big regular, you get the small and big uh, pro, but if they really want to push the limits of what an iPhone can do, and I would assume, actually, I don't know. I'm trying to think of this on the spot. I was going to say it'd probably come with a very premium price tag, but eh, I don't know. Maybe it won't. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like $50 more, $100 more because the Apple Watch Ultra stayed basically the same price as the Edition watch or the stainless steel watch. So I, mean, I guess it's not 
it's not an automatic uh, assumption that this is going to be a more expensive phone, but um, I, I think it makes sense and there's a lot that they could do with it. I guess this is a little bit of a segue, but kind of relating to it more so conceptually thinking towards this iPhone Ultra and bringing it back to the Apple Watch Ultra. Do you think the ultrafication of the Apple Watch has paid off in your use case and that enough where you want them to do it with other products like the iPhone? I, I really like the Apple Watch Ultra. Um, there's something about it being to me a more refined experience that it makes sense. I think we are getting into a little bit of a weird place with the naming nomenclature that we've got <laughs> pro and we've yeah. got ultra and we got max. I don't know how they're going to separate that, but I do think ultra makes sense if that's the name you give to the biggest of the category. So you have the Apple Watch Ultra, which is the biggest screen Apple Watch. You have the iPhone Ultra, which is the Pro Max. You have an iPad Ultra, which we did hear that Apple is working on a 14-inch iPad. Maybe that is an iPad Ultra, or maybe they just rebrand the 12.9-inch version to the Ultra and give it some exclusive features. It seems like Ultra just means larger screen with some extra Pro features, and if that's the case, I'm good with that. I think that totally makes sense and would be... Uh, sort of a nice way to get some extra features and really a way for Apple to move some people up because if they're already going to be spending, you know, a thousand dollars and then get a couple hundred dollars more from them and get some more um, features and uh, specs crammed into an Ultra product, does make sense. So I think there's a world that we could see an iPad Ultra, a MacBook Pro Ultra, maybe we see a Studio Display Ultra, which is like a new name for the Pro Display XDR. I mean, there's definitely a couple of different ways Apple could take this, um, but it all started from the Apple Watch this year, and I think that uh, yeah. the weight certainly paid off.